All right, this week we're getting practical. So Sketch, for those of you who don't know, has kind of become the tool of choice for UI, UX, and product designers. It's a high fidelity design tool. Imagine Adobe Illustrator, but remove all of the crap that you don't ever use for UI design, and that's basically Sketch in a nutshell. Look, just to get this out of the way, this video is in no way affiliated with or sponsored by Bohemian Coding, the people who make Sketch. The reason I'm making this video is to help you guys out, to show you the ropes. Today's video is going to be a very light, very basic overview of Sketch to get you started. Without much further ado, let's jump on into Sketch and have a look. So, this is Sketch. Yours may look slightly different, especially this bar along the top here, this toolbar, because it's completely customizable and I have customized it to suit my needs. But in a nutshell, the way that Sketch is structured is that it revolves around this concept of pages, artboards, and objects. So pages, think of pages as folders, and those folders contain artboards. And think of artboards as, well, web pages or pages of an app or screens. Let's go with screens. So pages are your folders and they contain artboards. Artboards are your screens and then screens contain objects, which are things such as text or rectangles or buttons or whatever you want to call the assets. Now the interface goes from basically highest level detail through to the most low level or nitty gritty detail. So on the left hand side here, we have a bar which contains our pages and our artboards. In the middle here, we have a visual representation of the artboards on the page that we have selected. And then on the right hand side, we have our inspector and the inspector contains all of the nitty gritty attributes relating to whatever object you have selected. Look, let's start off by adding an artboard to our page. So we will select the insert menu and then select the artboard. Now, quick tip, you see the artboard has an A next to it on the right hand side, just over here. That A is a shortcut. So instead of clicking on the insert menu and then clicking on artboard, we can simply hit the A key on our keyboard, which brings up the artboard tool. So we can click and drag to create an artboard here. And voila, we have an artboard called artboard. But if you noticed on the right hand side in the inspector, the inspector changed when we had the artboard tool selected. So if we press A again, you can see on the right hand side, we have a whole bunch of templates of default templates that sketch provides us out of the box. So you have common resolutions and common sizes for a lot of common devices and also paper sizes down the bottom there. Now, I'll be honest with you, I wouldn't recommend using sketch as a print design tool, but it can be done. So we'll go ahead here and add an iPhone 7 artboard to our page. And there you can see it. Now, if we go back to the insert menu, we can see shapes and we have a rectangle. Now, similarly to the artboard, a lot of these tools have shortcuts. So rectangle has R, an oval has O, the rounded rectangle has U, the line has L. And over here on the left, you see that text has T. So if we go ahead and just click out of that and using our wonderful memory, we can remember that R is rectangle. So we'll tap R and then drag a rectangle. We can tap U and we can drag and create a rounded rectangle, a rectangle with rounded corners. We can tap O to draw an oval. And quick tip, if you hold shift, you will get a perfect circle. And another little quick tip, if we press O again, and then we hold the Alt key, we can see that the circle expands from the center. So from where we clicked will be the center of the circle. And if you hold shift as well as the alt key, you'll see that it expands in correct or perfect proportions. And we can also press L to use the line tool. So similarly to the other tools, if you hold shift while you're doing this, it will snap to 45 degree angles. So we'll draw, we'll draw a straight line. A horizontal line. 
and we can press T and then click to type something. So as you can see my text, or as you can't see, my text is white. Now the way that we can change its color is by using the inspector. So if we select our text, which I know it's down there somewhere, so we can just select it. You'll see our inspector has changed to show us all of the properties or attributes of that block of text. And one of those attributes in this area here is color. So if we click on color, we get all of these options. So this should look pretty familiar. The really cool thing is that you can actually add a library of global colors. So those global colors there are from my work. You can also have document specific colors. So if we change that text to be bright red, we can press the little plus under here in the document colors and add that specific color red to our document. So if we go ahead and select this top rectangle, you'll see that the inspector shows all of the attributes relating to that rectangle. And just like before, we can click on the fill color and we can change it to whatever we want. And we can see that down here in our document colors, we have that same red that we used for the text. Voila. So you can basically manipulate objects as much or as little as you want using the inspector. So if we select this gray rectangle and run through the inspector, we can see that we can alter its position. We can change its you know, it's X value to be 20 pixels from the left hand edge and 140 pixels from the top. We can change its size to be 200 wide and maybe 40 high. We can rotate it. So you can rotate it to be 45 degrees. You can flip it horizontally or vertically. So as you can see, you can man manipulate it automatically like that. You can control how big or small its border radius is, so how rounded or sharp its corners are. We'll skip over shared styles, but we'll get to that in a moment. You have how opaque or transparent it is. You have the blending options. You have its fill colors and its border colors. And then you have a few additional things like shadows and blurs. Now, shared styles. Sketch basically has this concept where you can create reusable assets and reusable styles. So if we change the fill color of this to be green, and then we click on the no shared styles and say create new shared style, we can call it green rectangle. Now, if we select our circle, and we can actually apply the green rectangle style to that circle, it will inherit a few of those attributes from that rectangle. So from memory, it inherits everything below that shared style menu. So if we go back to the rectangle and add a drop shadow to it, we'll see that our green rectangle style has this little refresh button next to it. So we can click that refresh button, which will refresh the style, the shared style, and apply it to all other objects that are using that shared style. So now we see that our circle now has a drop shadow. And if we click on the other circle and add that shared style, we can see that it inherits all of those attributes. So that kind of touches on the fact that Sketch allows you to really quickly and comprehensively manage your design system or your design language. We won't delve too much more deeply into that today, but there will be videos on that in the future. And whilst we're talking about shared styles, there's one other thing that I'll touch on before we finish this video, and that is symbols. Let's say we wanna create a submit button. So we'll do that by pressing U and creating a little rectangle, then by pressing T and typing something, we'll write submit, we'll call it submit button. And then we can select both of those objects and using the alignment tools up here in the inspector, we can center them horizontally and center them vertically. And Look, we'll just leave it as gray and red for now. But if we select both of those objects together and then we right click on them and click create symbol, you'll see that Sketch is asking us to name our symbol. So we will call it submit button. And now over here on the left hand side with all of our layers, we have a little object called submit button. Now, if we use the insert menu and go down to symbol, we can add a symbol called submit button, which we just created. So we'll click that 
and then up on our other artboard we'll add our submit button. Now what you may have also noticed is that Sketch has added a new page called Symbols and that is where all of your symbols live. So if we click on the Symbols page we can see our submit button and if we let's say we click on the background of the submit button and we can change that to have a blue background. Cool. If we go back to our page, we can see that both of our submit buttons have inherited that blue background. Look, that is the basics of how symbols work. You have a page called symbols which hosts all of your symbols and then you can use those symbols throughout your design, change them once in one location and the updates roll across all of your instances of those symbols. I won't delve too much deeper into that today, but as you can imagine, that is some really powerful and really useful stuff. And these things are why Sketch has kind of become so popular and so favored among the UI design community. Thank you so much for watching. I really do hope you learned something from today's video. If you would like me to delve deeper into any specific elements of Sketch or of UI design in general, then please let me know. As always, please leave a like if you liked today's video and I will see you guys next week. Bye.